<laughs> hey, hey. What is going on, Daddy O? Oh, yeah, just a great hot weekend to get heat exhaustion for this week. But how about you, sir? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I totally get it. Um, I am good. I'm here at the Kyber Game. Happy Father's Day to you, sir. Happy and Father's Day to you. And to all the, the, the Got it. I'm so embarrassed. I have my glasses are broken. You can probably see on the side. I have no. Oh, that, that, that's what's missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spend the whole show going like that. I'm going to be looking intellectual. Hmm. hmm yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Happy Father's Day to all the wonderful fathers out there holding it down. Hopefully you guys have had a fun and relaxing weekend. Also, wonderful Juneteenth weekend to uh, to all of our friends out there. Yeah, yeah, I know you guys were at a, a con yesterday, you know. And we we were, we were at the Juneteenth Festival here in Fairfield. Um, this Saturday we are going to be at uh, Bright Spot, which is a dispensary. Um, we're going to be at Bright Spot from eight forty-five in the morning until one in the afternoon, and also. Um, we are waiting for our guest to come on. She is going to let you know about another exciting event coming up this weekend. But you know what else I'm excited about? What's that? Mezzo made it back across the border. Yay! Yes. Yay! <laughs> she didn't get held at the border. Well, that's that's <laughs> always good. <laughs> yes, our, our, our lovely Mezzo is doing great work. Awesome. Literally Weird. doing God's work right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she yes. is off on a missionary building. Um, well, she was. They literally just finished. She just made it back across the border today. She says she is exhausted and hurting, but her heart is happy. That's Aww. good. That's good. That's, and, that's why I'm here tonight with, with you awesome fan tonight. I'm glad to be here again. <laughs> and I'm always <laughs> excited when you can be here. We don't get enough time together, Graveyard. <laughs> After dark is just my my Fridays have been just hectic for the past couple of weeks just because my co-host has been moving and helping right. us out. So, dude, this last this last After Dark was kind of weird. It's the first time in the history of After Dark that none of the hosts showed up. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. I listen, I didn't get home until eleven thirty my time, so I had just was able to just get home and catch the last twenty ish minutes of it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you say Wong and Cam were there, and they seemed like they're having a great time too. So that's oh, yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> it was really cool. I, I've never really gotten a chance to talk to Cam uh, before, so that was a that was a cool, cool experience. What is okay. that, Mike Berger from the Jedi Council of America? Hey, Mike. Yeah, I mean, Cam's awesome. I talked to him a lot in distance learning. He's just a great guy. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm excited. Um, that is our first goal for Kyber Cave now that I have the Kyber Cruiser. Um, I'm going to be getting out to all of the Dave Hawthorne um, cons at Distance Nerding. I guess they do the interviews for panels. Yes. Um, and so I'm just going to tag along like like the little brother. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Matt, Mike? Off okay. to rest. Get get plenty of rest, Matt. So yes, we, Matt, so we miss you. You definitely deserve it. Yes. All so, right. All righty. You ready to get into some uh, some nerdy news for the week? I am, and then I have, unless you cover it, I have one I want to talk about and, and participate to. Ooh, I, yeah, I have I have two, but yeah, let's do yours first. Wait, you, before, before we do that, I wanted to remind everybody, please subscribe and share this show. I'm, I'm told by the YouTube, YouTube gobs you have to remind people to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We are 54 people away from our next Sabre giveaway. So if I get 54 more subscribers, however long it takes to do that, that will be our next Sabre giveaway. So they could happen next week. It could happen the week after. The sooner you help this channel grow, the faster we give away Sabres. Don't forget also, too, we have a Discord and a Patreon as well. Um, there are so many things with Kyber Kid. We have TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're kind of all over the page. So if you just Google Kyber Cave, all kinds of stuff will pop up. <laughs> Get involved with all of it. Oh, well, and, and as as Art pointed out, the more people that are subscribed, the quicker we get lightsabers away. And I'm hoping when we hit the ten thousand, we do something special. Do you check this out? I can show you right now which one I'm going to give away for the next. What? Hold on, I'm bringing you big there. <laughs> oh this wow! Will be the saber we give away and fifty four more subscribers. It's very, very interesting. Very, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. 
<laughs> now, I will tell you, there are a couple of things. This is our first sample of this um, saber. There's a couple of things I didn't really like about it, which is the reason we're going to be giving it away. Um, but and then keep in mind, just because I don't like something doesn't mean you won't like something. Yeah. Uh, this this kind of two level thing is kind of weird to me. Um, but I don't like that these are plastic. That's my biggest concern. Oh. I wish these were made of metal. And as you can see, this one's a little more flimsy. This side is solid in there. And it has to do with the types of screws that they use, which these are little things that we brought up to the manufacturer. Uh -huh. This is their first, you know, of this design. It's their first wave out. So it's a time for people to say, hey, you know, you should change it, change this or change that. The other thing they did that I thought was weird. Here's your buttons, right? Yeah. Here's your, your cross guard arms, right? Yeah. They put the cover tech wheel directly below the cross guard arm. So if you were to wear this on your belt, you would have this <laughs> blade jabbing into <laughs> your leg. So they should put this wheel over here instead so that the saber could hang this way and yeah. not this way on your body. Is that their first cross guard, though, you're saying? It's not their first cross guard. It's their first wave of this design. Okay. So, and usually, you know, in the first wave of anything, that's where they kind of work out the little bugs and see yeah. what people like and don't like. So those are my suggestions on things for TXQ to kind of clean up or whatever um, for future future awesome. ones. Awesome. But I will be giving that saber. That particular saber will be going to somebody's house. Ooh, and I see our guest is in. Yes. Oh, um, so let's let's get through. Let's go. Let's do your nerdy news first. Nerdy no, news. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard? It's a rumor. It's the secret. The dark word out is that Disney is selling Star Wars. <gasps> is who is buying Star Wars? And now we don't know exactly who it is, but we have an idea of who it may be or what direction it's going to be going in. And some people are very excited about this. Some people are very worried about this. Do you have any ideas, Mr. Graveyard? Uh, I don't know. I did not hear that. Um, That's really interesting. Uh, I, who could it, I mean, is it going to be... Maybe it's going to be DC. Maybe it's going to be HBO Max. You know, maybe right. Discovery. Who knows? It's interesting that they would do something he, like that. Here is the crazy, crazy word. It was first assumed that, of course, George Lucas would be the one of the first people that um, that they were going to try to offer it to. But no, right now, and, and keep in mind, nothing is 100% confirmed, but these are little talks that are going around and what people are saying. Right now, it's being offered, which which would help Disney a lot. Disney bought uh, Lucasfilm for $4 billion um, plus stock options. They're looking to sell it for $8 billion to a right now unknown Saudi prince. Oh. So what I'm understanding huh. is Dubai right now is trying to make itself um, a, a very well-known international um, tourist spot and what they want to do is they want to become one of the next big entertainment um, places so they're doing things like buying up um, big game uh, game companies that you know they're buying up the rights to, to companies that are struggling so that they can make almost like you know how like Disneyland has Galaxy's Edge and then yeah. there's Harry Potter Land they want to make those type of entertainment venues in Dubai Interesting. I know. I know. There's some people in that area that also recently bought the PGA. Yeah. You're right. Right. They're trying to make it a tourist, uh, a tourist, mm -hmm. top tourist spot in the world. <clears throat> so yeah. I don't doubt that at all. Huh. So that's my bit of nerdy news. Yeah. I never get to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, but first off, you know, big thing that happened in the past week: Marvel Studios announces updates to theatrical release schedule. Um, it, it's they're saying it's because of the the writers guild strike and a whole bunch of other stuff because they're expecting the strike to not you know finish until end of 2023 which is pushing everything wow. back for the most part um and yeah we did discuss this a little bit on yesterday morning um but it's it's such big news you know we have captain america has been moved back and you know the brave new world has been pushed back but deadpool 3 was pushed forward into that spot Oh wow. Um, which is really interesting because of the strike, you know, the rumors is that Ryan Reynolds can't improv any lines to the script already created, which he's 
does a lot. Right. I wonder how that's going to affect, especially Deadpool three. Right. I mean, that's kind of that's Deadpool is kind of known for that, right? I mean, that's yeah. That's what makes it fun is just the crazy, you know, lines that he comes up with. Right. Yeah, and I think it's you know all of that. You know, uh, Blade's been pushed back, which they've been having a hard time finding directors. Fantastic Four has been pushed back. But right. both new Avengers movies are pushed back one full year. Wow. So we're not going to get Secret Wars until 2027 at this point in time. And wow. I think part of it is the strike. Part of it is the up in the air with, with Jonathan Majors as well. So and we're hoping that also the VFX and maybe with the sale of Star Wars not being so focused on that, this will help then these movies become better looking as well. Right, right. Well, you know what's very interesting to me? When you look at... um Marvel and Star Wars and the complaints people have had, a lot of the fans have had about both of those properties over the last year to two mm-hmm. years. And then you start to look at um, now it's really coming out about the financial issues that Disney is. I mean, Disney is on the verge of things being very bad for them if they don't yes. figure things out very quickly. Yes. Um, and then, you know, one of the biggest complaints I heard with Marvel was they were pushing out so much content but they weren't taking time to really focus on each one, which was what made Marvel what it was in the first place. Oh, absolutely. But then when you look behind the scenes and then you see Bob Iger is pressuring Marvel to put out more content so they can make up, you know, make up this money that they're losing on the streaming service. It all makes sense of why so much stuff just phase four just wasn't as solid as people wanted it to be. Yeah. And, you know, they cut back their content too. They're going to release all this content and they said, no, we're stopping all of this, lots of streaming to focus on the VFX. So that's probably also then pushing this delay out. And then the strike happened, which is pushing even further out. The point. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm all for it. I, I oh. personally would rather they go slower and put out quality work than, you know, mm-hmm. just speed it through just to get it done and put out subpar movies. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But we have another topic for Star Wars this Uh-oh. week. We have yes. a trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. It was released a couple days ago, and this game is a, the first open-world Star Wars game. And, and people releasing... are going nuts. Yes. I mean, we I know what game we're going to be playing on live gaming when it comes <laughs> up, because we are a Star Wars channel. We have to do this. I, I'm right. smoked. Um, link to the articles in the description below with the full trailer. It looks gorgeous. I don't know if you had time to see it yet. I, I've seen some of the scenes, and then mm-hmm. one of the ones that everyone's excited about, because apparently it's something they've been trying to work on for many games, and they've just never really gotten it right, but was the ability to jump in your, your spacecraft and go from planet to space um, yes. without, like, a you know, a cut scene or something like that. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, they are working with... Um, yep, Kevin just Ubi- said it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're working for, with Ubisoft. And massive games to to create this game. It's expected releases in 2024. No definitive date yet. And I haven't seen any pre-orders as of yet. But this is going to be amazing. I think this is what Starfield is building up to. And now they're doing this with Star Wars, which should have been the first to do it, quite okay. honestly. <laughs> so if anyone hasn't seen it, like the links to, to these articles are in the description below. And the, the trailers are on there, too. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's great stuff coming out. It's Still a good time to be a Star Wars fan. Let's face it. <laughs> it, it. It is a good time. Even with the good and the bad, you know, everybody's got their own opinions on Star Wars since the whole Disney takeover. Mm. But, um, you know, when I was growing up, you had 20 years between Phantom Menace and, and Empire. I mean, uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. This game looks great. You even see Han Solo and Carbonite in the trailer. So. We don't, I don't think we know exactly the time frame yet, but it's going to be epic. I guarantee it. Right. Well, if it's Han Solo and Carbonite, that mm-hmm. does kind of zoom in on a specific time period. Yes. So, so. it's got to be somewhere between Empire and Return of the Jedi. Yeah, unless it's just a flashback and this is set in the uh, Mando days. So who knows? <laughs> who knows? We will. Know. You know who will know? We will know next year. Yes. 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 <laughs> all right. Well, that's it all for Nerdy News. Nerdy News. Yes. So. All right. All right. Next, um, we yes. have, we are very, very fortunate on this show. We have a fantastic producer named James Kaiser, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Darth Cephalus, for those in the know. 
Um, he is a fantastic flow artist. Um, and for the God, my these glasses are just driving me nuts. <laughs> for those that don't know, flow is um, it's like when you throw the saber around, or you know, people do it with fireballs or pui um, pui balls. But uh, it's basically the art and the aesthetic of the saber, not necessarily the fighting skills of the saber. So you know, they yeah. might roll it around their body or throw it in the air and catch it behind their back. All kinds of cool stuff. James Kaiser is one of the OGs in the flow field, and he is helping others that are coming up in it by giving him a shot here. So who do we yeah. have this week? We have Charles Poole. So let's bring up his reel, shall we? Here we go. Wow, that I mean, Ooh. he looks like he's on indoor in the forest there. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he did the under the leg flip too. That mm -hmm. was kind of cool. That was man, he's fast too. Yeah. So, so thank you, James Kaiser, for bringing us that flow of the show. And that was charged fooled. And you can find the link to his TikTok in the description below. So make sure to go ahead and check that out. Woohoo! <clears throat> excellent, excellent. And moving right along, my friend, we have with us tonight a fantastic guest. I've, um, for those that have been longtime viewers of the show, you may know Kang Snow. Kang is the founder of a uh, Lightspeed, um, Lightspeed Saber Group, Lightspeed International. Joanna jo jo will let us know how to say that precisely. <laughs> Anyways, this is his communications director, and we are speaking with Joanna this week because she's been very, very busy. She is part of the group that is putting on a um, the Saber League's finals next weekend in Vegas. So if you happen to be in the Vegas area or in any of the states surrounding that area, starting next Thursday will be the beginning of the competitions. Um, they have several different categories, but this is once a year. Some people may know that that uh, Saber League is in both a national and international um, group. So they're going to have people coming in from all over, and I'm excited to find out about this. Kyber Cave and Ripper Blades are both officially sponsors of this um, fight. So some of the winners to, uh, of the competitions will be receiving uh, Sabres from Kyber Cave. Um, I'm not sure what Ripper Blades is doing, but Ripper Blades will actually be there on site. We will be at a different con next weekend, so we will not be able to make it down to Vegas. But I want to know everything that's going to be going on. So with yes. no further ado, please give it up for Miss Joanna Lewis. <laughs> Joanna, okay, before we got to get go, before we start anything else, I must know, what is your blade color? <laughs> it's not a life and death question. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, we're having mic issues. Wait, I keep getting muted. Oh, no, wait, no, I, wait, I've got you now. Okay, do you? Okay, yeah, right, let's start, start your sentence over again. What My is your blade, blade color? color? Is, it is purple. 
Ooh, okay, I can deal with purple. I can deal with purple. I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, purple. Um, th that's my primary blade color. Um, I have four, so they're all different colors depending on my mood. But right. the, the primary on, one, my favorite mm -hmm. is purple. Depends on how angry you are at the, the your your opponent. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> if they were yeah, talking smack ahead of the round. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that flow that you just showed. I am so jealous of people who can do that because I've tried to do it and I'm so bad at it. Do you know how I many bruises I have on my head from smacking myself with the hilt? <laughs> <laughs> I I'm I'm a huge fan of anybody every every flow video I can find, I absolutely love. Um the I'm more of a fighter though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, all you have to do is tune in here every week. We try to present a different flow artist because I, I feel like flow is like it's it's the the little it's the, it's the redheaded baby brother of sabering, right? Nobody ever talks about flow, but it's just it's got so much of its own beauty and its own culture that we definitely you want know, to you represent. Know why that is, you know why that is? Why is that? Because the people who are fighting, they are not good. They're very, it's very few and far between that you have somebody who can do both really well. So you've got like the saberists who are fighters are like, no, 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 flow doesn't mean anything. And then you've got people who are flow like, okay, but this looks so much better than what you're doing. <laughs> but you know what? I would argue because I've heard a lot of fighters say, you know, get that flow out of here. That has nothing to do with combat or fighting. But if you watch some of the routines that some of these flow artists do, um, I almost uh, um, enliken it to like a karate kata, you know what I mean? Where you're doing specific sets of moves that maybe they don't really, you know, they just look like you're doing a dance or they, you can't make sense of it. But if you were to use some of these moves in actual combat situations, they translate directly. Um, I, and I see a lot of that with flow. I mean, it's all about body, you know, footwork and body language. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And there are definitely some, some flow, artists i'll i'll just call them that because that's what i think they are artists but there are some flow artists who are amazing at combat just with some of the blocks and stuff that they do in their flow that they have used and as practical like defense and stuff so no i exactly. i'm 100 in agreement that flow artists to me they they are just as capable saber fighters as anybody else Right. I, I think it has to be, it's kind of like, or, you know, they, a lot of them have the ability to jump out of the way or move their bodies in different ways. I kind of liken it to where when you hear about football players, but some of them will take like ballet class so that yeah. they can, you know, get their foot skills. And I mean, I think that's kind of what flow is to saber combat. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> well, while we're here talking about saber combat, let's get a little more on because that's what we brought you on here tonight to talk about and thank uh, you so much for the invitation i really appreciate it well thank you and first off did you receive your stickers and your sabers yes received yes, all right my manager's happy now <laughs> wonderful so tell us about this event next um next week that's coming up how many people are going to be coming are people coming is it primarily people from the la area do you have people coming from other states um, how long has this competition been running? Tell us, tell, tell us what you know. <laughs> All right. I can tell you everything. All well, right. let's, um, the first nationals that we did was back in 2018. And the original idea was that it was going to be something that we do either every year or every other year. And then of course COVID happened and everybody right. ended up stuck at home. Last year was our first year back at doing nationals. And we had a really great turnout last year. We have a even better turnout this year with wow. so many more events. We've got a three on three um, kind of tag team event. We've got wow. a two on two, which I'm really excited to see both of those. I'm competing in the three on three, but I'm really excited to see the two on two. Also, we've right. got a, a stacked women's event. There's uh, 10 women's competitors this year. Wow. And have an open tournament which anybody can compete in and an advanced tournament so it's going to be a really long weekend and there are people from everywhere i personally am in las vegas um, right. so right. i'm here we've got people from texas coming people from virginia coming people from uh pretty much everywhere uh wow. we've got bases everywhere so a lot of people are just coming to compete and have a great time so we're really excited 
Is this was it in Vegas last year as well? Yes, it was. Uh, we um, have it at the Orleans Hotel in Las Vegas, and okay. they're really accommodating. And last year was great because we happened. It was kind of a happy accident, but we ended up being there at the same time at this big one day martial arts tournament was happening. Mm -hmm. And so we had a lot of people from there kind of coming in and checking out what we were doing. And so this year it's, it's more of an intentional, it's happening at the same time again. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the people from last year there at, um, you know, checking out our tournament as well. Right now, is it in Vegas because of, I know, I know Lightspeed, um, you know, uh, Kang Snow is the founder of Lightspeed. Kang is in the L.A. area. Um, is is that the reason why it's in Vegas? Or um, do you ever plan on moving it like maybe an East Coast one or international one? Or do you do you foresee Vegas being kind of the spot where you guys meet every year? For nationals, I think that Vegas is going to be the spot for a while because Vegas, at Vegas, everything's an event. You know, it's always okay. like, oh, we're going to Vegas. It's kind of a big deal. So I think we're always going to keep Vegas as a huge, uh, as a huge event. But we do have um, other locations where we're doing kind of regional events. So you know, there, there, there are other places where we've had some major tournaments that aren't just like the one location tournaments. So Vegas will probably be where we have nationals and it's actually a lot cheaper for a lot of people to get to Vegas as opposed to say, go to Los Angeles or go to uh, some of the other places because Vegas is geared for tourists. So right. that does play a role. Wonderful. Wonderful. And you said that this year you've expanded the type of competitions. You were talking about a three on three and a two on two. Now a two on two, I can envision and tell me if I'm wrong, but I envision almost like when you're watching like WWE wrestling and you tag like the next guy in or something. Is that what it is? Or do two people come out at the same time? So there's actually four people on the field. No, it'll be, it'll be what you, the first one where like tag team, a little bit more of a tag team situation. Wow. And there are some really great uh, groups that are uh, that have come out of that. I'm really excited because this is going to be one of the first times that Kang is going to be able to compete because he didn't create this particular event. So he's actually going to be competing in the two on two skirmish. Oh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm beyond stoked to see him actually fight. <laughs> you know, he's it's great to work with him. When you're just like, hey, I want to work on a drill or, hey, can you help me work on some things that I'm a little kind of rusty at? Right. Um, but to actually see him in a competitive mode, I have been waiting for this like forever. <laughs> Joanna, last year, were you a competitor last year or a spectator? I competed last year in both the women's and the open. I took first place in women's and Ooh. I took fourth in open in the open. So. Excellent. And do you, how do you feel? What do you, what do you feel about this year? Are there, are there more women coming on or the same amount of women? Oh no, there are more women fighting this year. I oh, wow. am beyond excited. Like the fighter in me is so excited about this. And then <laughs> there's a part of me that's also terrified at the same time, because last year there were um, a couple of really great fighters in, in the women's um, cat who is out of, I, I don't, I think she's in Texas, but she mm -hmm. has like a classical fencing background. She took third last year or oh, no, wow. she took second last year. Um, she is fantastic. And I know that they have been really honing her skills. She is actually the first women, first woman to win an overall um, tournament. They, they had a tournament a few weeks ago or maybe actually a month ago now where she took first overall. So, oh, you know, wow. that's, that's, that can be, she's going to be some tough competition. Um, Allison is out of um, uh, Oregon or I think she's out of Oregon or Washington. She's mm -hmm. another one who last year she came out the gate. It, nobody had even knew who she was and she <laughs> took third and she did great. And she was like a sponge last year where during the pools, she was fighting one style and somebody took her aside and said, hey, you might want to change your stance. You might want to do this. You might want to right. do that. Cool. And it was like fighting a totally different fighter. Oh, wow. I've worked with her. So to me, she's had a whole year to kind of 
really soak up some um, information. So I can't wait to see what she does this year either. Right. And, you know, I like with Lightspeed, when I was talking to King, I guess he was saying that there's different there's different category comp, uh, competitions. So, for example, um, because a lot, you know, most of us or people who aren't in the, the saving world may not know um, that, you know, you tend to have a lot less women than you do. It tends to be a more male dominated thing. So I like that um, there's not only the women's category, but there's the general open. So it's not a women's category and a men's category. There's women specifically, and then there's a general, which is anybody can fight in that one. It doesn't matter um, your, your your background. And even newbies can fight in that too, right? Even if this is your yes. first time being around light speed. Yes. Um, we have we have like a novice tournament that's happening and as well as an advance. And what I'm expecting to happen, because there's a lot of novice out there that we have not seen fight yet. Right. I'm what I'm what I'm predicting is going to happen is some of these novices are going to wipe out the novice competition and it'll be like, oh, and I think I'm gonna fight in the advance because I am at that level. Right. And I think we're gonna see some of that happening. And we are we have a very strong women's um tournament as well. And we've we've always wanted to differentiate having like a women's division and an open division where anybody can fight in. This is actually right. going to be one of the first years that we're having a first, um, our first trans fighter is actually fighting this year as well. Oh, wow. So that's going to be, um, we're excited about that and seeing how we can as an organization progress and, and embrace change as well. Right. Um, <laughs> um sorry i was reading comments um yeah no that's that's incredible so each year that you guys do this are you looking like are you looking at next year looking to expand it again or um i find it very interesting that you went to this change with the three on threes uh within within a year we're always open for for different for different things. I'm not sure we might want to stick with this schedule for next year, but we will see how it goes. And if it has, because even in the midst of all of this, we also have workshops um, right. in between everything. So um, for example, and I had, I pulled it up on my phone, but we have like a basic refereeing workshop. We have a lot of workshops on Sunday, um, footwork workshops, um, how to oh, do wow. defense workshops. So even if you don't intend on coming there to fight, there's a lot of people who are coming just to do the workshops and to spectate as well. So oh, wow. we have things for everybody. Um, so that there's, there, there's always something for everybody. And we actually are having a, I want to say it's on Saturday morning. We're having an open, an open area so that you can try it out. So if there's people in the Vegas area who are interested in seeing what light speed is, we will have a morning workshop for people to come and, you know, give it a try, put on the gear and, and try it out. And that's one of the things that I really liked about light speed, because we've always done these open tryouts, even when we've been at, um, other events like a, a con or something like that. We have an opportunity where we'll have the, the tournament, but we also have a, a, a time set aside for people who are interested in trying it to give it a, give it a go. Right. Right. Now, Joanna, you yourself, have you ever been a part of any other league or have you only uh, been with Lightspeed? I've only been with Lightspeed um, officially. Uh, I'm in Vegas. There isn't a Lightspeed group out here i'm trying to change that um yeah. <laughs> so if anybody in vegas wants to come and fight hit look me up i will be happy to uh, get together with you at a park i have a car i will go wherever yeah. <laughs> um but the to me light speed has always been the most welcoming um when i first started i was Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I went to a park in Buena Park um, and where Kang was having like a, a workshop. Right. And I said, you know what? I, I, w I wanted to go with my brother and I, I tried to convince him to go with me. And he he was like, well, I can't go this week. And I just finally said, you know what? I'm going to go. And I just went for it. And I've always found Lightspeed to be incredibly welcoming and something that's easy to do. I am not somebody who likes to wear a lot of gear. That is right. When I fight, it's what's the bare minimum that I need? Oh, uh, elbow 
elbow guards. Okay. Right. Yeah. Then I'm fighting in a tank top in that because I'm going <laughs> to overheat otherwise. Um, okay. So I, I find Lightspeed was just kind of the most accessible to, to me because it was like, okay, I don't need a lot of gear. I had a fencing, already had a fencing helmet and I just needed to get a, a saber. And he was, uh, when I, when I was really starting to get into it, Kang was very like, Hey, this is the kind of saber that you need. Here are the specifications. Mm. Here's the exact saber that you can get at, you know, here. And, it, right. and so I, I found all of that incredibly helpful. And it was just kind of a testament to the community as well, because everybody else, um, it's like, oh, hey, I saw this. I thought about you. I thought you should try using this for a change or using that. And I mean, yeah. I've had friends give me sabers like, hey, here's a saber. Check it out. See what you think. And it's like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I know I've heard um, I've heard some complaints now. Not I'm not not to disparage any other fight groups or anything like that. Right. But some people will say that, you know, uh, of a certain fight group, they don't like how much armor that they need to wear. They feel um, constricted uh, to the movements that they can do. Uh, but I know with Lightspeed, you're just required, um, I think, just the fencing helmet, um, gloves, and el elbow pads, correct? And in a cup? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes to all of that. Actually, yeah. And and personally, I like that. Y you can use as much gear as you want because we have some people who fence in, you know, the chest plate and everything else. We have other people who have kind of cosplayed their way into some really cool protective gear. So right. it is it's just kind of based on what your preferences are. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I've been told that especially that was one thing they really um, enjoyed was the freedom of movement in in uh, in light speed. Yeah, I am. Uh oh. I, oh. I pride myself on being. Our connection's coming in and out. I heard I pride myself on being. Being fast. And the. the... We are losing your audio, Joanna. Our video has been spotty this whole time, but we are losing that audio completely. Are you there? Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, oh, I heard a laugh. I heard a laugh. <laughs> I think we're having bad internet connection right now, friends and family. Yes, I'm here. Sorry oh, for the spotty. <laughs> Sorry about that. I I apologize for the spotty connection here. Um, there's only one internet, really one internet provider out here in Vegas, and they are <laughs> We got you now. We got you now. So we're good. I you were talking. The only thing okay. I heard was I pride myself on. That's all I heard. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying now. Uh <laughs> Oh man, yeah, my 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 brain is totally gone off off the rails. So okay, so tell us about this event. This is what Thursday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. What what are the events going to look like? Is um, is, I think it's it's a smaller day Thursday, right? And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are the main um, nights yes. for the competition. Yeah, Thursday we start the day off with a couple of. Um, of workshops. So we have like a combat cheat sheet um, talking about fighting with control, which is an incredibly important workshop. So if you're planning to take some workshops, I always suggest the things like learning how to fight with control, especially if you're new, because that one is one of those where or if you're in competition, you find that you might hit a little bit harder than you normally would just because. Right. Um, and then we have the three on three in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. And, and then funnily, Thursday is the women's tournament and the advanced Friday. Okay. Right. So is it, sorry, is there a competition? I, I heard most of that. I heard the Thursday, the women's competition advanced on Friday. Is Sunday kind of a cleanup day or is there like finals on Sunday? <clears throat> 
No, actually, uh, uh, no, everything as far as the competition is concerned will be wrapped up by Saturday evening. But Sunday, oh, we do yeah. have a lot of workshops planned. Workshops and brunch. Because <laughs> you got to have <laughs> yeah, brunch. You got to mention important stuff. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And how many people do you think, do you anticipate? I know you don't know exact number, but as far as competitors, how many people do you anticipate this year? I think it's going to be about 40 people. Wow. And what did you guys have last year? Um, Last year, I am not 100% sure, but I want to say we were probably in the 30s last year. Okay, so there's definitely growth. Yes. Yes, actually, the, um, King had a number um, of participants that he wanted, and I think that we got to that number at some point because yeah. we ended up closing registration actually earlier than we would have normally. Oh, great. And is this going to be, um, like, um, videoed at all or be, uh, be shown on YouTube channel somewhere? Or? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. We will have... Um, our, our Twitch stream, they've been checking. Actually, they've been checking the Twitch stream all week. Um, I keep getting notifications of it, and I'm just watching them play with the cameras. Um, but it'll be on Twitch. It'll be on YouTube. They, it, most of the event will be streamed. Uh, the competition part of it will be streamed. Man, that is going to be a ton of fun. I bet you pick up um, through viewership. I bet you pick up more people that are interested in your sport. I, I think so. A lot of people come and, you know, you have people who are there to cheer on, uh, to watch the people, their friends, other people checking out the competition for next year. Um, but I actually think that we might have gained a few competitors this year who watched the stream last year. Oh, wow. That's exciting. So... It is. It is. We're we're really excited about it. There'll be commentators the whole the whole weekend. So you know, even if you're not used to seeing competition like this, there will be people who will be online while the the events are happening to explain what's going on. So if you have any questions, um, let us know. In uh, just checking, give me one second. I will be happy to give you guys the Twitch stream once I figure out what it is. <laughs> Um, give me <laughs> one sec. <laughs> I saw I and saw then, the, the the note and I'm like, oh wait, I should know this. <laughs> and once you give that to us, uh, Graveyard will get that into uh in into the board and description so other people can find that as well. How are you feeling, Joanna? Are you nervous at Thank all? You. Are you Thank you you ready you. for this? I am absolutely terrified. I am, uh, I, last year, I, I feel like I, I eked out the win. Um, I remember being very exhausted by the end of it. Um, right. I'm looking forward to, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, um, to fighting. Um, but I am a little nervous. There's a lot of women competing last year. Like I said, Kat and Allison were amazing fighters. So I can only imagine what this year is going to be like um, <laughs> fighting against them. Um, I, I, I'm trying to go to place in both. I know that that's an incredibly ambitious goal, but last year I came so close to placing third in the open tournament tournament that right I'm, I'm like no I can take both I can get two separate medals and I want that so I'm I'm looking forward to fighting for that <laughs> now let me ask you you were talking about when you were talking about um how you first met King I wanted to ask you but I forgot did you are you like a Star Wars nerd or uh you know because I I know a lot of people that love lightsabers that care nothing about Star Wars they just like that really cool glow stick um, to beat up their little brothers and sisters with. But what was it that attracted you to getting into light speed? Oh, wow. Um, I have to admit, I am not the biggest star Wars nerd. I have watched everything, but I don't <laughs> follow lore or anything like that. And there are times where I'm asked questions and there is just a very blank deer in the headlights expression <laughs> on my face because right. I'm like, I didn't read the books. I don't know. Right, right. I'm not that um, kind of a geek. I, 
I yeah, it's like I, I'll hit, I'll, I'll beat you up with the with a lightsaber though. <laughs> that part's cool. Um, right, right. I actually I came from fencing background. Um, I fenced in college, and after college fencing, you only go so far. It's like I'm not going to make it to the Olympics. I didn't start fencing till my last year of college, to be entirely honest. And right. um, I wanted to find something to do, and I tried a couple of fencing organizations, and they were just a little stuffy and were actively ignoring me, which is fine. Mm. I'm an adult. I don't need to be, like, babysat, um, mm -hmm. but I just felt like I wasn't going anywhere, and then I just I saw this thing about lightsaber fencing, and I'm like, what is that? Mm -hmm. I don't care. What I'm going to go check it out, and instantly fell in love with it from the very first time I got hit, I think. I was like, oh, this is <laughs> right. Do and you then, find do you find that your fencing skills translate directly over, or is it slightly different because you know it's a lightsaber? I guess it's a different tool, but um, can you use all of your fencing knowledge here, or is it different? Uh, I always say that fencing left a very good foundation for me because even now my style is there is some fencing footwork, but. I hate to admit this. I found this like '90s Mortal Kombat ripoff, like workout video. <laughs> it's so awful. It's like it actually it uses most of the Mortal Kombat, like the first movie soundtrack. Right. It is awful, but it's an incredibly good workout video for. Um, they're using a, a staff, and I use it with my lightsaber. Right. So it's it's helped me a lot. And I take a lot of um, like kickboxing classes at the gym, like cardio kickboxing and stuff. Not right. anything real, but like, hey, let's jump around for an hour and get all sweaty. Well, when you do that with a lightsaber in your hand, it's kind of awesome. So <laughs> there's the fencing foundation. And then there's all these aerobic classes that I've taken to help with movement after the fact. And I'm like, oh, you can take a Zumba class with a lightsaber. People look at you weird, but you can do it. Right, right. And, and I feel like this kind of, um, Eric has a question here, but I feel like we just kind of referenced that. But he says, um, I'd love to try some lightsaber fencing. I wonder how much stuff from other martial arts would transfer over. I, Eric, I can tell you when I got, um, we... Um, we have a smaller store now, but I used to have a store in downtown Fairfield where we had a dojo and a floor. And on Saturday nights, we had saber battles. Um, we had um, we had light speed practice on Sunday nights. But um, what I found really interesting about the saber battles was that you would find uh, people that would come in from different walks of life of martial arts skill. So I had um, uh, like there was some Filipino gentlemen who I guess they study escrema which is a use of short sticks. So they use short, uh, short bladed sabers. That was what they were most comfortable with. Uh, you saw people that came in from the kendo background. You saw people that came in from a HEMA background and all of these different fighting styles, they had their own stance and their own way to do it, but it all just seemed to blend together like a big, a uh, big stew. <laughs> Yeah, I always I tell Kang, I says, the, the best part about light speed is it's like playing a video game. If you ever wondered what a fencer and somebody who does kendo, how they would fare against each other to right. be light speed, set the foundation for them to, to figure that out. Right, right. If you were one of these people that was like, what would the British army be against like the Chinese 14th century dynasty? And you match those two together. That's what light speed is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. So do you see, um, well, I want to ask you in your, your job as communications director, um, what do you see for, for the next say five years um, or, or growth of, of light speed? Where do you see it going? Do you see it, first off, I imagine you see it getting bigger. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing in the next five years for light speed is um, steady growth. Um, I, I see us picking up a lot more events and some of them will work out, some of them won't. 
Um, I see there being a lot more clubs in different areas. There's a lot of people who are in areas who just need to build a club, me included, myself included in that. So I see that being something that we work on um, as, a, as an organization to be like, okay, we're going to, to start doing some expansion. Um, I see there being more than you know, we have nationals and then we have regionals in December. I see that being, a, a you know, a few larger um, tournaments. I also see there, there being some international tournaments. We've got a team in Canada. I would love to see them put on a major event um, where we get to fly to Canada. And I would love yeah. to see something in, in South America. It's like, hey, I, I'll go to Argentina for a lightsaber <laughs> tournament. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And All right, Joanna. Oh, go ahead. Last, go ahead. Um, I'll, and and doing stuff in different locations. Um, last, I want to say three weeks ago, they did a tournament at the beach. Oh, and yes, and I was so jealous because I couldn't go, but um, we actually got a new number one because of that tournament. Um, yeah, but um you know, doing stuff in places like that. Hey, let's have a beach tournament where we can start fighting in these different locations and, and start really experimenting with places that we can fight and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. I mean, the beach, um, the beach tournament looked amazing yeah. and yeah. it was like the idea of being on the sand and, and, and fighting with the, the, like the waves crashing behind you. I mean, who doesn't want to fight in something like that? <laughs> and, and that's completely different too. So just because you're a good light speed fighter on a tennis court doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be the best fighter on, on sand. Right. Anakin would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know you're not a big, big Star Wars person, but no, all right. I, I, I watched the movies. I watched all of them. So, so I, I get it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I got a hundred dollars right now, Joanna. You got a hundred dollars. We are gonna bet. Okay. Do you okay. think? And and we're not gonna even put a time limit on this. I'm just gonna say any time. Okay. Do you think lights uh, lightsabers will ever make yeah. it to the Olympics? Yes. Woo! I like that Definitive. answer. <laughs> now uh, yeah, you're saying that just because that's what you want, or do you? On it now. Mm -hmm. No, they're working on it now. They're trying to figure out how to make this work. Um, there is a, a fencing tournament that's happening, um, I want to say next month, that is incorporating light speed. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, uh, a France had a, a tournament that involved lightsabers as well. I think yes. if we collectively can agree on a set of rules, then then it's kind of like now we're cooking with gas right. um but who knows if that's that's going to be the biggest hindrance i think is coming up with a set of rules that everybody's going to be able to follow personally right. i like lightsaber rules but that's because i'm 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 a lot biased <laughs> right well i don't know but if you're I familiar with uh tony negron at the eight uh, uh aiken saber academy um, mm -hmm. I know him um, and, and other people, different people in different organizations. He's good friends with Kang, so he knows Kang. Um, but he discusses a lot with these different people that run different organizations, ways that they can all kind of come on a, a common playing ground so that whether you went to England or you went to France, you went to Brazil or come to San Francisco, there's a set of rules that everybody can play by. Yes, I I am a, I, I I am familiar with Tony. I think we're Facebook friends, but we haven't really talked, like had a real real conversation. Um, but I I'm in agreement. I think that there should be a set of rules. I would I would love for everybody to get together to create a set of rules. Like, hey, these are the rules when you're like these are the general rules, and it would it would be great. But I think that right now there's still so much kind of variation and ownership that right. that might be a, a bit of a ways off until something like the you know the world fencing federation um comes up with something and says okay this is this is what we're using i think that we're still a little bit of a ways off right right 
Well, you know, there's there's always hope. I know it was roughly four years ago. I think France was the first company to recognize saber fighting as a formal sport. Um, and I love their idea behind it. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it, they, it's their sports commission or whoever it was, but they said that the reasoning for it was because, you know, anything that gets kids off the couch and exercising, uh, you know, that whether it's with a fictional toy uh, stick or with, you know, a real weapon, that's still exercise. That's still a sport. Right. So I'm all for it. Do you want yeah, to I, I love it. <laughs> for next weekend, um, if I wanted to come as a spectator, is there some place I buy tickets or do you just go to the venue? There'll be somebody working at the door of the venue. So you're welcome to come by um, or you can get more information on our website, which is lightspeedstaber.com. Okay. Um, and and want- also our Twitch stream, it's Lightspeed Saber. Lightspeed Saber. You got all that, Grave? <laughs> I see him <laughs> nodding in the background there. We're getting that in the oh, description perfect. box. So any questions that anybody perfect. has for this tournament that's coming up? Or I know you said registration was closed to become a fighter, but maybe they're looking ahead to next year. They can go to Lightspeed and get that information. Should they be yes, asking they for you or, or or would just anybody help them out? Um, anybody will help them out. You can find us on all of the socials, Facebook, Instagram. Somebody will answer you. And we're all eager to talk. A lot of the times, um, if you send a comment on the website, I will uh, respond back to you. Um, or if it's – or. or and sometimes on like our Instagram feed as well. So somebody will get back to you. If you're interested in coming and watching, please feel free to come and join us. Uh, come in for the open session and, you know, try it out. See if you like it. Um, it's it's open to all ages as far as um, being able to come for the tryout. Uh, I always joke because I tell my mom that she is going to be fighting in next year's tournament. <laughs> and she was gonna win. Uh, to which she looks at me funny, like, no, but every time she <laughs> gets her hands on a lightsaber, you can just see her eyes kind of light up a little bit. Right, like, right. I can do this. <laughs> so, yeah, when you open up a senior league, I'll be there. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm holding you to that, okay? <laughs> That'll be next year. It'll be the, the, the seniors. And, and that's also another thing that we're hoping to eventually bring back because we did at one point have like a junior league. Mm-hmm. So, you know, where we had um, younger, not not young kids, but, you know, 18 and under, like an 18 and under league. So right. we might actually try to bring that back as well. I, I used to love watching them fight because they were just really fast. Right, right. Really good. And so, <laughs> and a lot of them kind of aged out into the, into the, uh, into the, like the normal pool now. And it's, it's been fun. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a ton of fun. I'm excited. I know we at Kyber, pardon me, I got hiccups. We at Kyber Cave are very excited to be a sponsor of this event. Um, I've been, well, friends, I've known King for a couple of years now. We've been lucky to have him on the show to keep us informed with what's going on with Lightspeed, especially through the pandemic when people were just looking for outlets. Um, mm-hmm. And they wanted to make sure that their favorite sports weren't going to just die away. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate everything Kang and you and the rest of the Lightspeed organization have done. Again, we're very proud to be sponsors. I wish we could be there for the actual event. But if you guys are going out, make sure you get yourselves some plenty of uh, Kyber Cave stickers. <laughs> yes. Yes. And thank you so much for having me. I apologize for the poor video quality today. I normally do not have this problem, but I'm sure... As as with normal things, uh, you know how that goes. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, we were. I'm just excited that you uh, had a chance to talk to us tonight because there's so many questions. Um, I love Lightspeed so much, but uh, you know it feels sometimes distant from me, and I don't have all the answers. So anytime I can have somebody from Lightspeed come out and just kind of update our viewers on what's going on with you guys, it's always a blessing for me. So, Joanna, I really want to thank you for spending time with us tonight. I wish you the very best in competition next weekend. I have faith with you. Go out there and kill it and and come home with three medals. 
<laughs> yes, I am, I'm in three different events. I'm hoping to come home with three medals. I am very excited and thank you so much. And we really appreciate everything that Kyber Cave does uh, for us as well, helping us get the word out and, and talking with us and just kind of being excited about this this field in this area. It, it, it is appreciated. Well, right. I'm hoping um, I'm hoping uh, sometime in the near future we can bring you back and uh, we can talk to you with some shiny medals in your hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that would be great. All right, Joanna, thank you so much. You guys have fun next weekend and uh, I'll be watching. I know that. All right. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Peace. <laughs> Take it away. Dude, I love how those videos, they just have the, like, the little lines go out, like, ouch! Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that was that was an awesome interview. Thank you, Joanna, again, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Would you do a graveyard? Would you battle? Would I battle? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, I would. I, we'll get in there on that two-and-two two division, man. We'll take on Joanna yeah. and, her, and her partner. I used, to, I, I used to do stage fighting in, in high school and theater. You know, I, I do have some martial arts background, too. So why not? Right? Why not? See, Lightspeed may be the place for you, my friend. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once again, Miss Joanna. Yes. Uh, all righty. All right. Next. And as everyone knows, we have our, you know, our producer, uh, Kevin Hogan, who is always at a con every weekend. He does Just saw him this awesome afternoon. work. Yeah, you saw him? Awesome. Well, yeah, he's everywhere. I, I do. I kid you not, man. When I tell you that this man is at every. In fact, I I honestly think he's got like clones of himself running out because this cannot possibly be one person that is going to all these cons every single weekend, holding down a regular job and taking care of an elderly father. Yeah, he. Did. It's amazing how much is there <coughs> out in California. Like I said I'm hoping that you guys come out this way so you can do some cons. It's going to, but yes, here's Comic Con Adventures with Kevin Hogan. Hello.
Woo-hoo. Thank you, Kevin Hogan, with that awesome update, as always. <laughs> yes, we will be there at the Villains and Heroes event in Benicia. And I feel like I've been kind of like blackballed from Ohana Con or something because I cannot. The one that's in Vacaville is like our next town over. And then they do one in Fairfield. And I never, like, I get to freeze them out. I always see the flyer like, Conquer, you know, Vacaville is coming up in another month. And then I always message me, I, I, I need a spot. And then, of course, all their spots are gone. So I'm like, I need to figure out how to get a hold of them like long before they announce that they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I got to figure that out because there's no way Kyber Games should not be in our own local backyard. Oh, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yes, right. many, many uh, cons abound. Hopefully we will see you at a few of those. Uh, and then when I, you can always check the Kyber Cave Facebook page or our um, kybercave.com. We have a calendar on there. And uh, Stephen keeps that updated to let you know what cons we're going to be at. Especially when I start getting here out of um, out of California, uh, it'll be good. Uh, it'll be good reference for you guys to know where you can uh, find us. So yes. make sure to check that out if you haven't. Absolutely. All right, sir. Where are we going to find you next weekend? This weekend we are going to be we are going to be at the Bright Spot Dispensary from eight forty five, which I don't know any stoners that get up at eight forty five. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a huge line last night. I, I I I say that, but I'm joking. There was a huge line because they have all kinds of like sales and discounts and all kinds of things. So there was actually a huge line, but I was like, these can't be real pot smokers, man. These are imitation pot smokers. They're buying stuff for their friends. <laughs> yeah. Because all the real plot heads are still asleep. <laughs> there you go. Kevin says, do it months before. There you go. Uh, right. Uh, Elks yeah. Lounge. Oh. Okay. Okay. There yeah. you go. Well, Kevin, let me know. Do you you are the inside to everything. So um, let me know. And I, I need to get those vendor spots. <laughs> all right. We got just one more little segment to go. And this is our outro, my friend. Yes, so stay tuned for tomorrow where we have an upload for Retro Alcove. And make sure to check out all our stuff that we do at at Kyber K Productions on YouTube. We have new episodes, new shows every single day of the week. So check that out. Seven days a week. Yes, and more stuff coming. As you said earlier, top of the show, join our Patreon just for a little dollar a month. You help support us and what we do. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe this and share this out too because, like I said, more subscribers, the, the faster we build, the more chances for lightsabers will be had. Exactly, exactly. And I want to give them all away. Mez, we miss you very much. We are glad you are back in the United States, but we will be even more glad when you're back on the screen with us. Yes, so, all right, without further ado, here's Talking Time. We'll get. We'll see you guys next time. Good night, y'all. <laughs>